Bearing down on the gleaming capital of Jongdu, Genghis Khan raised the black banner of war on his historic enemy, the Qin Dynasty. To take the heavily garrisoned capital, the Mongols would have to starve its army by eliminating Chengdu's suppliers. But first, the Khan directed his warriors to raid Qin buildings and villages surrounding Chengdu. Word of the army's wealth would spread, compelling Mongol soldiers from the north to join the fight, seeking spoils of their own. Hearing of the Khan's successful raids, Mongol settlers and soldiers arrived to join his army. With his numbers steadily growing, the Khan turned his attention to the capital. He sought to starve Chengdu's army by cutting off its suppliers. Hold on. 
Gergiliyor sar padokso. Gerg var tutup bir dev kusso. Sanırdık ankar gergi kasso. Enar otay lan. Gerdat toka değil de yo. Korku guda. Avşit. Karvaç da bekle. Karvaç. Otan amul ko sanır toka. A Qin trader made it safely into the city and reported on the Mongols' numbers and movements. Chengdu would now allocate any military supplies it received to rallying counterattacks on the steppe invaders. struck down the trader that was headed to resupply Chengdu. For every trader killed, Chengdu lost several days' worth of supplies. The Mongols were systematically choking the city and starving its garrison. Without hesitation, the Khan's warriors put their torches to the market at Darsing, snuffing out weeks of Chengdu's supplies. In destroying the supplying markets, the Mongols denied Chengdu critical supplies, leaving its garrison weakened.
Despite the Mongols' efforts to stop them, enough Qin traders had entered Chengdu to fully resupply its military. Choosing their moment, the Qin launched a counterattack. The Mongols put down the Qin counterattack, but another would soon come if Qin traders continued to resupply Chengdu's military. In raising the market at Fangshen, the Mongols had severed a critical supply line to the capital. As the Mongols continued to sabotage the city's supplies, Chengdu's garrison grew weaker by the day. Oh, 
Şahide kurul doğumu değil. O şahide kurul için tak bol. Mongols left the Shunyi market in ruins, ensuring the village could no longer send supplies to Chengdu.
Despite the Mongols' efforts to stop them, enough Qin traders had entered Chengdu to fully resupply its military. Choosing their moment, the Qin launched a counterattack. With Chengdu devastated by starvation, the walls of the great Qin capital were devoid of soldiers, and only a diminished garrison remained. Desperate and isolated, Zhongdu could no longer resist. The time had come for Genghis Khan to launch his assault on the city. Oh, 
Genghis Khan unleashed the wrath of his Mongol warriors on the heart of the beleaguered city. The Great Chin Monument was put to flame. Mongol victory was within reach. The city was ready to fall in the wake of the destruction wrought by the Mongols. Oh. 
Zhongdu fell to the wrath of Genghis Khan's warriors, yielding great riches for the Mongol Empire. The sacking of Zhongdu would be remembered as one of Genghis Khan's most devastating victories. But this was just the beginning of his quest to create a global empire under Mongol rule. On June 1, 1215, the city of Chengdu, known today as Beijing, fell to the Mongols. They looted the city, sending caravans loaded with luxuries back home. This victory over the Qin dynasty was to be one of Genghis Khan's greatest triumphs. After his death in 1227, his descendants continued the conquests, and his grandson, Batu Khan, had his eyes on the west. The Mongol raids of the 1220s had shown that the Rus lands held riches worth exploiting. The battles had devastated the Rus elite, and their defenses were weak. So Batu Khan organized an enormous invasion force, determined to turn the Rus lands into vassals of the Mongol Empire. The Mongols captured territory after territory. By 1240, they had their sights on the great city of Kiev. Kiev was a jewel among the Rus' principalities, a center of scholarship, power, and wealth. Batu Khan's cousin, Monka, was put in command of the advance force, ready to attack. Chroniclers tell of Monka's admiration for the beauty of Kiev, so he was reluctant to destroy it. Monka sent his envoys to the city, to demand its surrender. But Kiev's commander in charge refused and killed the Mongol envoys. Monka would not stand for such disrespect. His army rode to the city walls and prepared to attack. They would show Kiev no mercy. 